Hello and welcome to Purple Hats 2023. Today's talk is on intelligence-driven threat hunting with adversary simulation and purple teaming. My name is Ahmed Kalunch and I lead threat hunting managed services for UI. Standard disclaimer and quick reminder that my talk today doesn't necessarily express those opinions of UI. A little bit about my background. Uh, I've been in cybersecurity operations, managed services, for over a decade now, main focus areas are around anything security operations like threat, threat detection response, incident response, CTI, VM. But today, uh, especially, it's going to be about threat hunting, which is one of my passions within security operations. Bunch of uh, certifications, including uh, GCIA, GX certification, GCI, GCIH, etc. All the standard forensic stuff, um, and of course, CISSP as well. So definitely have a good, strong background around this. So getting into the topics of what we're going to be covering today in the talk, uh, four main areas, we'll start with an introduction of uh, what real threat hunting is in, in respect to this talk, what and how is threat hunting intelligence driven. We're also going to be talking about adversary simulation, how that is related to threat hunting. And then that will tie us into purple teaming and how purple teaming is related to threat hunting as well. So first section, get right into it, is what threat hunting is. Uh, it's always good to have a kind of a firm understanding of what threat hunting is. A lot of, a lot of times it's thrown out and, you know, when we say, is it IOCs, is it threat intelligence, etc. cetera. Uh, so this is kind of a, a definition, if you will, of what, what threat hunting point of view is. I'll get into a little bit more details, uh, but just going to read it out here. Threat hunting is a proactive method of identifying gaps in threat visibility to detect previously undetected threats. Threat hunting is driven by threat intelligence or other new information and utilizes existing or previously collected data. Threat hunting is about finding threats that could evade existing controls and threat hunting must have a defined process and outcomes. So we'll kind of break out what that definition is. Uh, the few key things in there, we said threat hunting is proactive versus reactive. Defense in depth, right? There's a lot of reactive security operations that we're kind of familiar with. Incident response, uh, responding to alerts, 24 seven monitoring, triage, et cetera. All that is, is foundational and required. But what, what threat hunting does is kind of complement that and, and fill in the gaps. It's a more proactive approach where we're not waiting for one of the security tools or we're not waiting for something to be identified. We're going out there and, and looking for it manually uh, before really there's a, a real cause of concern, right? So that's what uh, the proactive element is in security operations and that's what threat hunting is, the proactive component of that. And a lot of these other processes like alert triage uh, cover a lot of the known threats, right? Here's a specific indicator. Here's a specific type of signature. If we get this alert, we know it's bad. Uh, but uh, the threat intelligence changes. We found out about new, new information and threat hunting with that proactive approach supplements all those other processes. And, you know, if you have, for example, incident response and maybe there's nothing really going on, so you can kind of use that excess capacity to go out and proactively look for other areas as well. There are certain areas that, you know, the alert and monitoring might not really be able to cover. So you can certainly use threat hunting to supplement all of those uh, efforts. Now, we also mentioned uh, that threat hunting is based on existing collected data and new information, right? So that kind of intersection of the two is uh, the main focus area of threat hunting. So you find out about new things, right? You're monitoring and, and you know, here's an Intel provider or here's something that you've recently found out about. We didn't know about this threat before. So we don't think we have monitoring. We don't think we have alerting capabilities. So we take that new intelligence and then we have all this collected data. You have endpoint data, you have data in your SIM, you have log data, network data, all of that. So you take that new intelligence, you search it against the existing data, and then you're trying to find those uh, bits of pieces that uh, match those two that did not necessarily already have uh, any alerts or, or monitoring for. So it's the intersection between 
new information and cyber threat intelligence uh, searched against existing data. And that what that's going to do is it's going to help us to identify those gaps, right? So you find this nugget in the data. Well, was that something that we have security controls for? Was it detected? Was it prevented? Uh, it, what do we know about that, right? Should it have alerted? And then once you find that, is there something that occurred similar to that previously as well? So it's really about identifying those gaps, finding things that would have passed through. And then also once you're done with that, improving your defenses based on those, uh, those findings. All right, next we're going into what does it mean and how is threat hunting intelligence driven, right? So the goal of threat hunting, right, is to find the, the threat actors, right? Something that would be uh, harmful potentially to, to the organization, the environment you're hunting in. And foundational to that is cyber threat intelligence. Cyber threat intelligence is knowing information about the threat actors, right? So you have to understand what the threat actors are doing before you can accurately hunt for them. You can look for anomalies and just weird activities. A lot of times that, that might find activities related to threat actors, but without knowing exactly what you're looking for, uh, you could spend a lot of cycles and kind of rabbit hole down things that may or may not really be related to the threat actors. So how do we collect cyber threat intelligence? The easiest way for threat hunting based on threat intelligence is indicators of compromise. Those things include, for example, network-based indicators, IP addresses, domain names, et cetera. And you can search those across your tools and then you can find whether or not those are uh, matching the threat intelligence, right? So those are very easy ways to find threat actors or behavior related to the threat actor that you're hunting for. As you kind of progress in maturity in your threat hunting, you can start to move more towards the, the behavior that threat actors are using, which are a lot harder to change for them as well. And these are things like tactics, techniques, and procedures. And we're really trying to understand what they're doing rather than just having indicators of, hey, here's a tool or here's the command and control. And we're actually trying to find clues of the behavior that the threat actors are doing. So a really good framework for that is a MITRE attack framework. It has a matrix of all the tactics um, that, that are known for, for threat actors to use, and then individual techniques and even sub-techniques that you can really study and understand. So when you have an Intel report, it might say, hey, here are the indicators of compromise that you can search for, which are definitely good to do. But then also you can start to understand, you know, how do they get initial access? How do they maintain persistence? How do they lateral move? And then you can study that and then start to look for those specific behaviors as well. In case the, you know, the malware file hash has changed, maybe that's not a good indicator anymore, but most likely the behaviors and TTPs are not really changing. So uh, a really key focus area of threat hunting is to try to move towards behavior TTP based uh, threat hunting as well, utilizing MITRE attack. And then the next level, uh, once you kind of, uh, get to that uh, maturity with TTP-based hunting, what you can do is start to build out a scenario for threat hunting, uh, which means that you're, you're understanding the motives, the goals, along with the TTPs of the, the threat actors, and you build out a scenario, right? So maybe there's a more uh, comprehensive uh, threat report that explains the full scenario of how a breach happened, maybe in a similar organization, you can compare those tools uh, with your own profile as well. Do you have similar tools? Do you have the same vulnerabilities, uh, same exposures, similar architecture? And then you can build out a scenario of what that type of incident would look like if, if it were to happen in the environment that you're hunting. In. So you flesh out that scenario, you identify all the TTPs that the threat actor would have taken across the MITRE attack framework. And then you use those uh, individual techniques. And, and this is not going to necessarily have as many IOCs related to it. You can still find the IOCs, but you really map out all those TTPs into a scenario and you use that as your, your basis to, to do this intelligence-driven uh, threat hunting. 
All right, so the next section uh, we're looking at is related to adversary simulation. Why do we want to simulate adversaries when we're doing threat hunting anyway? So let's say, let's go back to the scenario-based threat hunt where we have 20 different TTPs that, that we've identified and we want to go out and hunt for each of these, right? And, and certainly the, the threat intelligence around what the adversaries are doing is going to help with that. And you can try to uh, make assumptions on what that would look like in the logs. Uh, but this type of threat hunt can be very, very time consuming. And if you have dozens of TTPs, it's not necessarily straightforward on how you would even look for each of those. So that's where adversary simulation comes into place or adversary emulation comes into place. And it really helps to accelerate your, your threat hunting capabilities and makes it very clear on finding specific items that you're looking for. So it kind of helps you to translate those TTPs into IOCs because you're creating the IOCs related to that TTP. So once you know exactly what the scenario looks like, you have the TTPs, you can go out and say, we're going to go as if we were under attack, right? For this type of thing that we're hunting for, for this scenario, we're going to go simulate that and that's going to help us to create kind of breadcrumbs that we can go hunt for. And those are going to be things that are very good indicators of if this type of threat actor was in, in our environment before. So there are a couple ways that we can simulate adversaries uh, related to threat hunting. Um, one of the more straightforward ways to do it is through a manual uh, attack simulation. So, you know, if you have a, a red teamer that can act as that threat actor, in the environment that they, they, they'll have to have an understanding of cyber threat intelligence. They'll have to be able to understand the MITRE ATT&CK framework. They'll be briefed on the scenario that we're hunting for and understand the individual TTPs. And then their job is going to be to go out, log into the environment, or if it's happening external, go simulate that activity and put on that, the hat of what the threat actor would be doing uh, as part of the scenario. So not everyone has uh, that uh, skill, right? To be able to uh, manually do that. So the second way uh, that we can do that, and, and also it's sometimes very time consuming. So you might have the capability, but maybe you don't necessarily have uh, enough um, time to be able to do that. So the second way is through uh, automated breach and attack simulation. So one of the tools uh, that we've used for that is, is attack IQ. And what you can do is really, uh, MITRE ATT&CK really comes into play here as well, because it's kind of like the lingua franca or Rosetta Stone of everyone is talking the same language, right? So you can just take that MITRE ATT&CK tactic, sorry, technique ID or sub technique ID, put it into a tool, uh, like attack IQ and it will find all the simulations related to that. And you can add them to your simulation plan and just hit execute and it's running those simulations for you on all of those hosts. So you can kind of take that, um, go back to your hunt plan, and then now you know exactly that this thing that we're hunting for, this particular technique, uh, part of the scenario was run on this host at this time, right? And then you can go into your endpoint tools, you can go into your SIM, you can look at your logs to see how that activity is actually looking like uh, when it is executed. And then you kind of extract those IOCs. You can determine whether or not those would have been successful, right? Is, is there a prevention for it? If there's a prevention, is there an alert? If there's no prevention, uh, did it at least alert you on it as well? And then um, if it didn't alert, are there any forensics data that you could have reviewed? Uh, how long was that data retained? Can you search back? Uh, and it's going to really help you understand both if that type of activity exists in the environment and how you would stand up against the scenario like that uh, to help you uh, focus your, your threat hunting activity. All right, so the next section kind of tying it all together is uh, purple teaming. So basically what purple teaming is just a combination of these threat hunters, SOC blue team type analysts that are really looking for uh, the evil in the environment, looking for the threat actors, bad guys, uh, and then pairing them up with the red team analysts. So the red team analysts could be those 
manual adversary simulations or the ones that are executing the uh, the breach and tech simulation tools like Attack IQ. Uh, and, and really what the purple teaming is, is coming together and creating these workshops, right? So everyone will have their own notes. I ran this, I was successful with this. You know, when I did this, this tool popped up that said, hey, this was blocked and we've notified your administrator or hey, I got this far and then I was cut out. I lost access to the internet or, hey, I, I got this far. And then, you know, all those clues and, and stuff that you don't usually get as a blue teamer, you can get from your, your counterpart on the red team side uh, that can share what they have done. And then similarly with the automated tool, you have a log in the breach and tech simulation tool that says, hey, look, I ran this command. Here's what the output was. It's successful because I was able to do this. I wrote this registry key, all that type of stuff coming together and really helping you to uh, identify what those uh, activities and indicators are. And then the, the output of that uh, purple teaming exercise is, is really a, an acceleration for the threat hunting uh, because you have this whole scenario plan, you create a hunt plan on all these scenarios, you identify the TTPs, and now you can go through each one and you can say, hey, look, number one, we look for this type of initial access. We know that it was prevented by this tool and et cetera, et cetera. For number two, uh, this is the TTP. We looked at it and you know it wasn't blocked, but it was alerted. And here's the alert signature. And what we did is we looked back 12 months and there's no evidence that that ever occurred previously, right? Or we looked at this and, you know, this activity was alerted, but it was only a low severity alert. And, you know, we looked back and it happened thousands of times, uh, but then we can kind of compare, well, what's different about this one than the 999 times that it happened before. And those kind of just help you to continue to uh, improve your security operations. It helps you to uh, find those gaps. It helps you to find the limitations in your tools, and then it helps you to continue to improve your defenses. Um, finding out like, hey, here's what uh, we know. Uh, this never happened. This is what we don't know because we don't have visibility. We know that this tool doesn't work properly to detect this, and, and it's really helping you to continue to uh, improve your threat hunting capability. One cycle after another, you take those lessons learned, and then you kind of go back to your ideation phase where you you look back and decide what you should uh, hunt for next. Thanks again for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed the talk. Feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. It's Ahmed Kalunch and happy hunting.